black man. Just being a black man. I'm a Marine Corps vet, y'all. Marine Corps vet, y'all. Sixteen years coaching. Sixteen years coaching. Ten years in the pen, man. Ten years in the pen, man. I've been arrested, protested, underestimated, estimated. Now I'm resurrected. Now I'm resurrected. I'm a former basketball coach, but the most important reason why I'm here, I did nine years in prison. And I just got out 13 months ago. But since I've been out for thir the last 13 months, I've been traveling all over the state of Ohio in, in forms just like this, whether it's for uh, ODRC or whether it's for the county reentry, which I came through the Montgomery County Reentry Program, or it's at a college, and tell you how important it is for you to help us. Now what's amazing, I'll give you a little bit about my story before I get to this all in, all in uh, community thing here. Um, in 2008 I got incarcerated and have you ever had your entire life ripped from you like that? <coughs> you get comfortable, you think everything's okay, you think everything's wonderful, and then all of a sudden it's over. I lost my wife, I lost my job, I lost my reputation, I lost everything that I have built for 40 years. And be 40 years old and go to prison. And then try to get out nine years later and start all over again. So without the support and the help of people from the United Methodist Church, I don't know where I would be. Now I give, I give honor and respect and credit to my family. My family has ridden with me. Uh, my, my children, who were all teenagers and, and, and youngins now, my youngest one is 17, and the rest of them are adults. But when I went to Chilla Coffee, and, which is up the road, <laughs> that's hell. It's the valley of death. I walked into that place with my, with my, my bags. Into D3, if you've ever been in there, probably not. How many of y'all been to prison? Anybody? Yeah. How many of y'all were residents of state? <laughs> <laughs> so you can't understand. In 2008, I was one of the coldest winters we had in a long time. We had ice on the windows. They didn't have enough blankets. Our families have to provide blankets. Our families have to provide clothing. Our families have to provide food because the food that is being fed to us is not very good. Now it's privatized by uh, whatever them folks are. I don't even, you know. Airmark. Yeah, there it is. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. But the things we take for granted, okay? We take them for granted. So for 18 months, my health went all the way down here. Imagine the stress that was on me. Medical, medical health care is terrible. Okay, so you got to understand there's lines and lines and lines and I'm a pretty healthy guy. I work out, I'm fit, so I kept myself in shape. But there are lines of people who have been on drug addictions, lines of people who have mental issues, who stand in line from here to the, car, the parking lot out there getting their meds three or four times a day. Can you imagine that? And then we're in the chow hall line and they look like zombies. You just step right, get your tray and you go sit back down. So that's the lifestyle. And some people deserve it. Some people... Sometimes it gets, it, gets, it gets personal because I have a lot of brothers that are still there. Okay? But 18 months in, a program came called the Horizon Program. And this awesome guy named Jeff Hunsecker and Pastor Richard Boone showed up. We call him the Dragon Slayer. Because he, he didn't care who we were. He didn't care what we did. He didn't care what our past was. He had a passion to serve and to help us get our transition. So I wasn't feeling it. I thought I had myself all together. You know, we, you know how when we become Christians, we don't feel like we need anybody's help. We're, you know, we're saved up. 
So I went because somebody else invited me to go. But once I got into that program, I realized that there were issues that in my past that I had never dealt with. Demons in the closet that I had dealt with. And that program helped me realize that I had some issues. And so sometimes when we go away to our wilderness, to the belly of the beast, to the lion's den, that that's where we need to be in order to find out who we are. And we say in prison that pressure busts pipes. And when you're under pressure or when you're under stress, you realize who you really are. And a lot of times we walk around and say who we are in Christ Jesus and, and who we are and how we, we serve and do all these wonderful things. But when we really need it on the battlefield, we kind of say, let Joe do it or let John do it. I give great honor and respect for Mr. Gary Hopkins back there. That man gives the greatest hugs on the planet, and we appreciate him. He hugs you till your back cracks. <laughs> But we look forward to that hug. We look forward to all of those volunteers walking in that prison saying that we love you and we care about you. But when it was time to go home, and I, I got to spend six years a part of that program helping men get their transition internally. <laughs> but once it was time to go home, then what? That's where the problems started. But for me, I was blessed because of the networking of your peers. United Methodist Church, Pastor Boone. I'm here right now because of Pastor Boone and because of Gary and because of this man right here being able to tell you that we need your help. Six years ago, in A1 Block, in Chillicothe Correctional Institution, seven guys, counting me, met with pastors from all over the United States, United Methodist Church pastors. Came into a room called Room C, and they came and asked us, what can we do? The guy that drew this right here is in Lucasville. You probably never see the light of day. But he still was willing, even though he may never get out and see his twin daughters, was willing to give a sacrifice for guys that, were made, that will get to go home. But we needed somebody to come home. When you come home, like she said, I don't know anybody. I don't know anyone. And there's a story in the Bible, and I'm going to close it with like this, because this is the only way you're going to be able to understand what I'm trying to say. In the Bible, when a person received leprosy, they were cast out of the city. When a man or a woman gets a number or goes to prison, they get cast out of the city. They're no longer a part of the community. They're no longer called citizens. We're called felons. We're called offenders. We're called convicts. But are we ever allowed to come back to the community? So in the Bible, old school, the, in order for a person to be able to be received back into the community, they had to come through the priest. And the priest would proclaim them healed and clean. The church has more power than you could ever imagine to come into a community and say, hey, he's clean, she's clean, he's clean, she's clean. And then it takes the parishioners and the lay people to say, brother, sister, welcome home. You want people to come back and change? You want people to come back and be productive? You cannot ignore them. You can't ostracize them. You can't isolate them. Because the moment that they look and there's no one and everybody's like, here you he come. There you go. Slam door in your face. Slam door in your face. I got to go back to what I know. I'm under stress. I need a, I need a hit. I need a drug. I need a job. I, uh, so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hustle. That's what we call it is a hustle. You don't want them to do that. Then say, here we are. All we need, Matthew 25, 35. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I didn't have any clothes, you clothed me. And when I was sick, you healed me. And when I was in prison, you came to see about me. We're coming home whether you want us to or not. So embrace us. All in, which means I'm willing to lay down my life and sacrifice 
Like my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went to hell, took the keys, and allowed, allowed us to set us free, and got us out of hell. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leaves me beside still waters. He restores my soul. Help us. God is glorified through his people. Matthew chapter 5. You want to see the hand of God? Look to the right and look to the left. Thank you. Now I'm resurrected.